Good morning, all. So in today's video, we will look into the very famous short story, A Day's Wait, by the very famous writer, Ernest Hemingway. Now, before moving into the analysis of the story, let me give you a small introduction about the author. Now, Ernest Miller Hemingway was born on July 21, 1899 in Oak Park, United States. Uh, now, he was born into the hands of his physician father. He was the second of six children of Dr. Clarence Hemingway and Grace Hemingway. Now, his father's interest in history and literature, as well as his hobbies like fishing and hunting, became a lifestyle for Ernest. Now, in 1916, Hemingway graduated from high school and began his writing career as a reporter for the Kansas City Star. But there he adopted his minimalist style by following the Star's Style Guide. Use very short sentences, use uh, short first paragraphs, use vigorous English, be positive, not negative. Okay, now all these things can be found in the short story, A Day's Wait, which we are going to discuss. Now, another important fact about Ernest Hemingway is that he wrote his best known work, The Old Man and the Sea, published in the year 1953, for which he won a Pulitzer Prize and the Nobel Prize in Literature. Now, this was adapted as a film, The Old Man and the Sea, in the year 1958, for which Spencer Tracy was nominated for an Academy Award as Best Actor. And also, Dimitri Thyomkin received an Oscar for Best Musical Score. Now, let's look into A Day's Wait Summary. Okay. A Day's Wait, published in the year 1939, is a brief story by Ernest Hemingway that conveys the seemingly tragic outcome of miscommunication between a boy and his father. Okay, so the story actually goes like this. Um, Shatz is a nine-year-old boy who becomes very sick one winter night. Uh, so after a doctor is called, it is determined that Shatz has contracted the flu and has a very high fever. Now, it is considered only a mild case and the doctor leaves medicine for the boy who is actually overhearing something that the doctor is actually telling him. Okay, so the doctor is actually telling his father that the boy's temperature is 102 degrees. Now, it is this information that actually causes the perceived conflict and also the misunderstanding between the boy and also his father. Okay, now Shatz is put to bed. And his father maintains a steady watch over him, reading from a book about pirates. But Shatz seems unusually detached. And when his father suggests he gets some sleep, the boy is actually refusing because something is actually disturbing him. Okay. So the father reads to himself for a while, but the boy remains awake. And strangely, it seems to the father, suggests that the father leave if it bothers you. Okay. So the father tries to reassure the boy, but he again tells the father to go away if any of this is bothering him. Okay. Now, what happens is that thinking that the boy uh, is simply a bit lightheaded, the father leaves the room and takes the family dog for a walk along the frozen creek. Now, the dog flushes a cave of quail and... The father kills several before triumphantly returning from the hunt to find Shatz still white-faced at the foot of the bed. He's not at all recovering from the disease. Now, after the father takes Shatz's temperature, the boy demands to know what it was. So the father is actually responding that it's just something like a hundred, although it is actually still above 102. So the father gives Shatz his medicine and a glass of water, but the boy still seems unusually concerned. But something is actually bothering him. So once again, he reads to his son about pirates, but he sees that Shatz is not paying attention. So he stops. So the boy suddenly asks something which actually shocks the father. Okay, so the boy is, act um, the boy is asking, about what time do you think I'm going to die? Okay. 
So the stunned father is taken aback, but Shad asks him again, then he will die. So the father tells him all will be okay and calls it a very silly talk. But then Shad explains, at school in France, the boys told me you can't live with 44 degrees. I've got a 102. So the father quickly explains to his son about the difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius thermometers, comparing them to miles and kilometers. So the boy slowly relaxes and by the next day, he cried very easily at little things that were of no importance. So we can understand that Shatz is finally relieved and he finally gets to know that he's completely okay. He's not going to die. Okay, so although the father shows genuine concern over his son's condition, he's actually failing there to recognize the boy's misunderstanding of the doctor's diagnosis and the son's mistaken belief that he would die from the high Fahrenheit temperature. Also, additionally, the father confirms the boy's fears when he goes hunting after Shad suggests he should leave. Okay, so though the story ends in a very happy note. There are certain themes in this story which should be considered as something very, very important. Okay, so let's move into a day's weight themes. What all are the basic, main, important themes in this story? So the first one is miscommunication and misunderstanding. Okay, so the story highlights how a very simple misunderstanding about temperature um, can lead to significant fear and confusion, emphasizing the potential of miscommunication between different generations. And also the story underscores the importance of um, clear and uh, precise communication as the uh, misunderstanding could have been avoided with a very simple explanation of temperature scales. Okay. And uh, there is one more thing, uh, the impact of assumptions, like the consequences of assuming knowledge or understanding without verification are, are also highlighted in the story, showing how such assumptions can actually lead to unnecessary distress. Okay, so the first will be miscommunication and misunderstanding. Now, next we have innocence and vulnerability of childhood okay now we can we can very well understand that from the story that uh shad's reaction to his perceived imminent death is uh reflects the innocence and vulnerability of childhood where uh, a very small misunderstanding can actually escalate into intense fear okay and also um, we can uh, see that children may actually lack the contextual knowledge or uh, experience to accurately interpret situations leading to heightened emotional responses based on limited understanding. Okay. Now, next theme which we can uh, find in this uh, short story is contrast between perceived and actual danger. Okay. So, uh, Shad's believe uh, that he is on the brink of death uh, actually illustrates how perception can magnify a perceived threat even when the actual danger is far less severe because we know what is actually happening in the background okay so the story shows how emotions particularly fear uh, can distort one's perception of reality leading to an overestimation of danger and uh, the revelation of the true temperature scale serves as a reality check um, highlighting the star contrast between Shad's perceived danger and the actual level of risk okay now next we have is a uh, fragility of life and appreciation of health now uh, Shad's fear of dying reflects uh, a basic human awareness of mortality, even at a young age, prompting contemplation of uh, life's uh, fragility. Shad's uh, relief upon learning the truth um, about his fever highlights the immediate shift from fear to gratitude for being uh, healthy. Uh, emphasizing the fleeting nature of well-being. Okay. Now, finally, we have the importance of clear communication. Okay. The story emphasizes how clear communication can prevent 
uh, unnecessary misunderstandings and uh, elevate anxiety or fear caused by misinformation. Now, the father's clear explanation of the temperature scales serves as an example of how providing accurate information in a straightforward manner can uh, dispel confusion and uncertainty, okay? Now, effective communication involves um, not only speaking clearly, but also actively listening and ensuring that the message is actually understood by the other person, as demonstrated by the father's response to Shad's distress, okay? So now uh, we'll again, uh, once again, just recall this um, eight days way themes. First is miscommunication and misunderstanding. Then we have innocence and vulnerability of childhood. Third, we have contrast between perceived and actual danger. Then we have fragility of life and appreciation of health. And finally, we have importance of clear communication. Okay, so with this, we have come to the end of this lesson. Thank you.